Right, TJ, Unit 3, Specimen Lab for Intermediate 2 Maths. No answers in the back of the book, so I'm going over it for the benefit of my class and anybody else who's interested. So here we have outcome 2, a picture of a quadratic uh, graph going through the point 1, 3. So we know it's of the form y equals kx squared, it tells us that in the question. Find one point anywhere on the line, in this case 1, 3. So this means that when x is 1, y is 3. So if we substitute into the equation that we're given, y equals kx squared becomes y equal uh, 3 equals k times 1 squared. 1 squared is 1, so it gives the value of k to be 3. Let's go back to the very first line, replace the k with a 3. So the equation of that parabola will be y equals 3x squared. Number seven, we are given, well, there's the normal y equals x squared graph. This graph has been moved one to the right and up two. So given this equation, we need to interpret the move of one to the right and up two. Basically, we need to know how to replace the value, replace the values of a and b correctly. So, moving up two, that's just the number on the end. So the plus b becomes a plus two. And a move of one to the right, we put x minus one in the bracket. So a move to the right is a negative in the bracket. Move to the left is a positive in the bracket. So we get y equals x minus one all squared plus two. Number eight. This time it gives us the equation y equals x plus 4 all squared plus 5. So going on what I've just said is plus 5 will move, a, move the parabola up by 5. The plus 4 in the bracket will move it 4 to the left. There we go. So a quick sketch of it to help. Part A, write down the equation of its axes of symmetry. Well, we'll see the, the mirror line there, if you want to talk in primary school language, goes through minus 4 and it's vertical. So everywhere on that line, x equals negative 4. So the equation of the line is x equals negative 4. Part B, write down the coordinates of the turning point. Well, the turning point is basically the point where, it stop, where the parabola stops decreasing and starts increasing. That's happening at negative 4,5. And it also asks, is it a minimum or a maximum? That's the minimum. That's a minimum. It's the, the lowest it ever goes to be a minimum. If it was... A maximum, it would be a sad face parabola graph. Not the best mathematical language, but hopefully you understand what I mean. Question 9. The diagram shows a graph of the function y equals x squared minus x minus 2. Use the graph to solve the equation x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. Well, if we know the relationship between the equation and the point event section on the x axis, the Points where it intersects the x-axis are simply the solutions to the equation. So x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. Number 10. Factorise and solve. It's telling us to factorise it. So we've got to put it into brackets. Quadratic equation will be bracket times bracket. So it's kind of giving away the answer there. But at the start of each bracket we'll have x and x. At the end of the bracket, we need two numbers that multiply together to make 6. So I've tried 6 and 1. So if I try FOIL here to check my answer, x times x is x squared, x times 1 is x, 6 times x is 6x, 6 times 1 is 7, uh, 6. So the outside and inside terms will be 6x and x. Add them together, we get the 7x, so we know we've got it correct. So that's it factorised, that'll be the first mark. Then either the first bracket is 0 or the second bracket is 0. In which case x would be negative 6 or x would be negative 1. Going to number 11. Given the equation, told to use the quadratic formula to solve it. In other words, it won't factorise. So quickly note down the values of a, b, and c. a is the coefficient, or how many x squareds you have. b is the coefficient of x. We have three x's, so b will be three. And c is negative six in this case. 
then we substitute into the quadratic formula. So we're doing there, so x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times minus 6 all over 2 times 1. The reason why I've put the brackets in, if you type that into your calculator, the calculator will do it all for you, you won't make any silly mistakes. So we get negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 33 all over 2. Plus or minus is because there are two solutions to it. So firstly, looking at the negative 3 minus root 33 all over 2. Uh, if you've got a nice Casio calculator, use the fraction button and put it exactly as you see it. If you're using one of the white calculators that the school sell, put the top in a bracket or calculate the top part first and divide by 2. If you use my calculator, I'm showing what my calculator is telling me and underneath I've rounded it negative 4.37. The second solution Instead of going for the negative, we're going for the plus. So negative 3 plus root 33 over 2, 1.372281, etc. 1.37 to two decimal places.